Hey guys, so this is the uh, Tyro 129 and if you've been thinking about getting something for long range FPV but thought the cost was too high, definitely should check this one out. Uh, it is a kit, you'd have to, you'd have to build it, and, but it's pretty easy and I'll have all the uh, 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 videos to help you put this together and set it up. Uh, obviously for long range you need GPS and it has GPS rescue set up as well. It's an incredible value at $129. Um, there was another 7 inch uh, pre-built drone was about $300 so less than half of course you do have to put it together. I have broken up this video into several shorter videos so that you guys can uh, go over each, each video one by one to get this set up and get ready for your first long range FPV flight. Yeah, $128 if you lose this in the mountains somewhere not a big deal. Um, so that's why I think this is a good one if you want to get started in it and try it out. So anyway, there's going to be a link down in the description to the playlist to all the rest of the videos in case you missed the previous ones or the ones that are coming later so you can get the complete picture on how to put this together and do your first long range FPV flight for a very, very little cost. Okay, so in this video we uh, want to make sure that all the software is set up properly on the flight controller and also make sure the motors are spinning in the proper direction. We're going to do that first, uh, so we'll get to the beta flight here in a second, but first off we want to go into uh, BL Heli Suite and connect to the flight controller. In this case it's on COM port 3. And then we need to plug in a battery. Um, make sure that the props are off. And uh, you won't get those final beeps because we have the flight controller connected. That's normal. Go ahead and check here and here we are on the latest uh, firmware 16.7. That's all good. So let's go ahead and we'll go into the motors tab. And let's check the direction of every, each motor here now. Uh, this is backwards here because uh, the front of the quad is this way towards the bottom of the screen. So motor one's going to be over here. This is motor two. Motor three is here and then motor four is over here. We just want to make sure that they're spinning in the proper direction. So we'll hit the I understand the wrists. And then we'll go ahead and then just, just gently raise up uh, the throttle value. So it's spinning and then so this one is spinning okay. So motor one is spinning in the proper direction. No need to change anything there. Let's see, check motor two. Motor two looks good. Now let's check motor three. Motor three is looks like that is not correct. So it's going the wrong way. Yeah, I'll check motor four. Motor four looks correct. Okay, so everything is correct except for motor three. So we'll go back into the setup here about we'll connect and check. And we just need to right click on ESC three and then hit the motor direction, hit reversed, and then hit right setup. And that will reverse the direction in BLH Suite. Now, of course, you could also go in, uh, if, you don't, if you don't want to use the software, you could just uh, go into and uh, actually just uh, swap two of the uh, motor wires, and any two, any two doesn't matter, and it will reverse the direction of the motor for you. So go ahead and check this again, and we'll go ahead and check the motor directions one more time. I'm going to check the box here. I'm going to do all of them at the same time. And we'll check motor one, two, three, and four. And all of them are spinning the way I want them to. So that, that should do it. And once you have your motors all spinning in the correct direction, you can go ahead and unplug the battery. And then now we'll go ahead and look at uh, the beta flight setup. So uh, make sure you launch your beta flight. The firmware that's already on here is 4.0.3. It's not the latest, 4.0.4 is out, but it looks like it's already set up. I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, came with a tune on and everything. So I'm just going to go over uh, what came on here uh, and a couple of the changes I made. So we'll go ahead and um, obviously connect the USB port. 
and then once you're connected, uh, hit connect on Betaflight. And you want to make sure that we have the proper um, board orientation, and that looks like it's true. So that just double check that it, it was correct on mine. I have to change that. If it is wrong, then you'll have to go into the configuration tab here and fix that here. So it should be uh, so it should look like this: uh, zero 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 and first, and then. Uh, clockwise 270 for this one here. This is how mine was set up. I didn't change that. And let's go back to ports here. Um, under UART 1, GPS was already set up, and under UART 2, Serial RX was already set up. Now, on the flight controller, um, you do need to set your. There's a solder bridge that you need to set for S bus, or um, which is going to be on the left, or the other two on the right is going to be basically like uh, I think it's the other three DSM. PPM and IBUS. So if you have one of those receivers then you have to solder bridge the opposite of the way I'm doing it because I have an SBUS receiver and the uh, that uh, the receiver port is on UART2. Now um, earlier in the build I set up, uh, I actually added an extra wire for the VTX and that's uh, the VTX is actually a smart audio VTX so I put that on UART3. That's actually TX3 on the flight controller. This was not set up. I put that in here and I selected VTX TBS Smart Audio. That is what you want for this particular video transmitter. And then it actually tested it already and actually it works. Um, at this point, UART 4 and 5 are open. So you could use those um, if you want for something else. I don't believe there's anything connected on here. The uh, ESC is not a 32 bit ESC, so there's no ESC telemetry or anything like that. So those are just two UARTs available to you if you only use the uh, solder pads on the flight controller for additional accessories. Okay, so moving on to the configuration tab, uh, motor direction is standard here. I'm, 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 not, I'm not changing that at all. I already checked the motor direction. Now, motor idle throttle value is at 1.5. It's pretty low, so I may want to change that. Uh, we'll see if there's any death rolls or not. I'm just, I just find it odd that this is so low. D shot 600 is correct, and then motor stop off. That's, that's just normal. I like that. That's, I'm going to leave that alone. I may adjust the motor idle, idle value if, if anything should go wrong later. These are the uh, gyro and PID loop frequencies, 8 and 2, and with accelerometer on. This has GPS rescue already enabled in here, so you need to have the accelerometer on for that for it to work. And this, has a, this board does have a barometer. Um, not sure if that's going to really help all that much for anything. It does let you know what the altitude is, which I, I did uh, enable in the OSD. There was not, almost nothing set up in the OSD initially. And then uh, magnetometer is, is turned on, but there's actually no magnetometer on this board, so uh, I'm not going to change. I'm going to change and leave it alone. It does have an arming set to um, 180 degrees, so you can arm it at any angle in case you crash somewhere. Where kind of weird. I have my receiver set up as a uh, serial receiver and S bus. Of course, if you have something else, obviously change this Spectrum, I bus, Crossfire, etc. This is the receiver I have. It's set up like this, and then a GPS. Is turned on over here. Um, mine was turned on like this. This is how it was set up. So this is normal for that particular um, GPS. Um, if it doesn't look like this, then you should change it to look like this. Now under other features, it does have soft serial and telemetry on. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm just leaving them on because this is the way it came. And then uh, it had uh, these turned on as well. Air mode, OSD, anti-gravity, and dynamic filter. So if, if yours doesn't look like this, you should change it to like this. And then on, again here on D-Shot Beacon Configuration, there's no beeper on here, so basically these are turned on to make the motors, um, uh, tr basically turns the motors into a beeper. And then all of these are turned on as well, so go ahead and we'll move it on. So under power and battery, I had made some adjustments here. This was just stock configuration. I am going to adjust the number here for the amperage meter. I'm putting in a value of 15,000 because it was seemed like it was really off. Um, I may adjust that later, so just keep in mind this might be incorrect. Here the scale for the voltage looks like it's correct. Under failsafe, I have all of these set up uh, pretty much standard, and for whatever reason, I'm not sure why it was set to drop for failsafe procedure, which is, uh, um, I think is because um, that they probably were conservative. I probably were expecting you to adjust this setting later. I'm changing this to GPS rescue here. So that when you enter failsafe, it will go into GPS rescue instead of just crashing. So um, these are all settings that you can adjust here. These are just stock settings here. 
I may adjust these um, in a future video, so keep that in mind. Generally speaking, I, I leave these mostly alone. And um, uh, yeah, so this is how way I have my uh, fail safe page set up. So if you want to follow along, this is the way you should have your setup. And under pin tuning, I didn't change anything here. These were the ones that came in with the flight controller. And um, it seems fine. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with the pins they put in here. If it needs adjusting, I'll let you know in the later video. And then under, let's see, under receiver, here you want to make sure that, so right by my receiver, you want to make sure that your channels are moving in the proper direction and that uh, all of your switches are working, etc. Um, and so all of this is looking pretty normal here. This particular receiver has RSSI and AUX12 and I have that set up over here. So change your settings to how your, your particular receiver wants it to be. And then under modes, this is how I have my modes set up. It did have some strange modes in here. I think it was for whatever transmitter they were using when they set it up. Obviously your setup is going to be different from mine. I have my arming on AUX1, and then I have angle mode on AUX3. So in the second position that enables angle mode, and then in the third position on AUX3 that enables GPS rescue. So I have GPS rescue on a switch. I have beeper on AUX2, so that's in the third position. And then I have flip over on crash on the second position on AUX2. So this is how I have my radio set up. Your radio might be a little bit different, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty standard stuff here, nothing too fancy. And then under OSD here, this is how I have my OSD set up. Basically, I'm just um, putting like battery voltage, uh, milliamp hours drawn, cur uh, current drawn, number of satellites, uh, distance, uh, or sorry, distance from home, and the home direction arrow, and then this here is the altitude. And then we have the total number of flight uh, flight time and also RSSI on the screen. This is pretty standard for what I like to set up. That's uh, pretty much it for setup. I basically had PIDs. It had most of the uh, things set up there except for the Smart Audio, which I, I showed you earlier. And I think at this point we're ready to um, go ahead and take it for a fly. So uh, stay tuned for the next video and we'll have a maiden flight and you'll get to see if any other things change at that point.